Um, <clears throat> well, don't forget that just because there's <clears throat> 250 tracks in front of me, it doesn't really mean that they're all useful. Um, and it certainly doesn't mean that... <clears throat> um, it doesn't mean that they're all meant to be wide. Um, you know, uh, this Jason Mraz track that I'm working on is, is a perfect example of, of smart and tasteful um, production and, and arranging um, because Joe Ciccarelli and Jason produced the tracks and arranged it in a way that that perfectly encapsulates the emotional idea that they were after. And um, so as far as the stereo spectrum goes, it, I don't give a crap about that. I don't, I don't care how wide something sounds. It's, it's all emotion. That's what it is. You know, I know that, that y'all are, are young enough to be listening to it and thinking, you know, that, that this width is something or, uh, you, you know, that this is an amazing thing. But um, anybody who does this on a daily basis for their living um, is really just thinking about emotions and about the song. So I'll take, you know, I'll take vocals that typically someone else might try to make wide and pan them over here, you know, on one side and pan the organ over here as a counterpoint. So to me, it's, is there something of equal emotion on the other side? So if I put the vocal, the background vocal part, that's sort of a, you know, a Jamaican, you know, island kind of, uh, you know, uh, chanty vocal put over here. What's what's the thing of equal emotion and character I can put over here to counter it? Those are the kinds of things I'm thinking about. As far as, you know, some big width of a keyboard or vocal part, sure, yeah, there, there are those pop songs that it's really all about that. But the best way to accomplish that is to, to, to focus things back and forth within the, within the spectrum and then use that one element, whether it's a big string pad or whether it's a big you know, vocal part in the chorus or whatever it is. So the way that you create that width is by not using it up with other things. So if every element you have is panned wide, like, you know, like a piano isn't meant to be panned wide. It's just odd to me. To, to hear like this giant width of a piano because no one ever sticks their head inside a piano box. Um, so, you know, you have to think about your placements based on, on, uh, based on individual characters and emotions happening in the song. And then, you know, where you do want this big wide thing to happen, use one element to do that or two elements to do that. Um, and you can you can you can thread them throughout the song so that in the the B section there's a, one element that's big and wide and then the chorus is another element that's big and wide but throughout the song everything gets threaded for for its emotion and its its counterpoint or its um, support uh, um, alternately to some other emotion um, on on either side and of course up the middle. Um, mm -hmm. So, I don't know if, again, that makes sense. Um, you know, I don't know what level you all are at, so I, I don't know if, if you can think about things that way yet. That's great, thanks, Andy. Um, can I just ask a quick question uh, about reverb? Um, I'm just wondering how, well, which kind of types of reverb you tend to use in the track, whether you have one dialogue, one voice, or one on auxiliaries, or whether you use <coughs> I'm I'm probably more old school than 
than uh, than y'all. Um, so I, you know, my first experiences in apprenticeship and training were with, um, you know, with old school guys in New York who had um, no automation and had two EMT 140 plates to use. Um, so, of course, I don't do that, but um, we, I, I keep that concept going. Um, so, in, in other words, I'll have, uh, I've got a, a bank of, of auxes that are, are imported into my sessions, every session. So, I'll have have emulations of, of plates. Usually I use um, UAD stuff, EMT-250 emulation and an EMT-140. Um, they, they make a couple really cool um, delay things, like analog tape delay things, like the Roland uh, RE-201 and the EP-34. Um, which are really cool and fun. Um, so I'll use tape delay sounds and and uh, along with reverb sounds. Um, uh, I have uh, a, a Bricasti M7 uh, reverb that I use as well, which is quite nice. I have a couple Lexicon upboard reverb boxes. Um, and... Um, what else? Uh, you know, occasionally I'll use the Oxford Reverb. I'll use the Revive. I use the Soft Tube has a great reverb. Like I don't even know what it's called. T T S R. I don't know. Whatever you guys figure it out. Um, but they make a great reverb that I use all the time. Um, and uh, yeah. Uh, so those are the ones that I use, and I don't, I don't, you, you'd be really hard-pressed to find a track that I instantiated a reverb across the track. Um, very rare. Um, uh, it's just not in my nature to do that. I would, I would even if I was going to only use it on that one track, I would probably create an aux and a send, and 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 do it that way. Um, it's very rare that I would I would instantiate a, a, a reverb across a track, um, but increasingly I find my um, my rough mixes coming in from younger guys with um, and and younger younger engineers and producers coming in with with reverbs across you know instantiated across the track, <clears throat> um, and. In an effort not to, not to deviate too far from where they, where they are, I I will occasionally leave that on or put my own reverb across that track in the same way, um, to 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 accomplish that. Um, but it's pretty rare that I'll do that. Did that make any sense? I, I'm not even sure that answer to the question. I I blabber on so much. I don't I don't really try to compete it's it's not my thing I don't do it this way um, to me um, maximization is a is a technique that is is for the mastering engineer to implement uh,